On today's episode, I'm gonna cover Compression 101, and I hear a saucy rumor that JHS Pedals has a new compression pedal. Is that true? Sure enough. Must be. To know how to use compression, we have to understand what compression is. We're not talking today about the 90s app WinZip. We're talking about audio compression. And one of the very first applications of this technique was used after we invented a device called the telephone. You see, when you use the telephone, you sometimes talk to a guy who talked really, really loud and he blew your head off. Or you talk to someone who was very quiet and you couldn't quite make out what they were saying. So they applied this compression technique to that audio signal and they brought the quiet person up and the loud person down, leveling them into the center. This is why compression is often referred to as a leveling amplifier. And in the 1930s, we see compression enter the commercial market, as well as the first ever instances of electric guitar being compressed by valve amplifiers. In the late 1970s, we see the world's first ever guitar compression pedals hit the market. Let me show you a few of those classics. First up is the Roland AS1 Sustainer. This is really cool because it's pre-Boss. Look at the packaging, which tells a little bit of a story here. Distortion-free sustainer. This is really significant because up until this time of the 70s, you only saw sustain as a control on a fuzz like the Big Muff. And Roland's basically saying, hey, no fuzz here. This is clean, compressed sustain. Uh, they come along later with the Boss line, CS1 for instance, CS2 and so on, really great compressors. Next up we have the Dynacomps, everyone's seen these. Here's a script, a block logo, uh, and the newer versions as well. And we have the old classic Ross compressor, which is a modified Dynacomp. And my personal favorite is the Dan Armstrong Orange Squeezer. It's not a pedal, you just plug it into your guitar, but it's really fantastic and I based my pulp and pill off of that. So you're wondering, how does compression work for electric guitar? Well, it works just like the telephone example that I showed you earlier. Some of your guitar playing is quiet and some of it is loud. So it's gonna bring those loud parts down and the lower parts up so they can meet in the middle. Compression's kind of like the mom of your pedal board. Let me explain. Little Timmy's upstairs blaring Pantera and dad's in the dark cold basement reading Mark Twain. But then mom, the compressor, she calls them together for a beautiful dinner. And all of a sudden, dad in the basement and Timmy upstairs come together for a harmonious evening where their lives will never be the same despite their horrific differences. To help you further understand compression, let me go over the five most popular controls that you're gonna see on most any compressor pedal out there on the market. The number one and the most important control of any compressor is called the threshold. Now, one confusing factor is that many manufacturers call this different things other than threshold. Let me show you a few examples. Boss uses the term sustain, MXR calls it sensitivity, Diamond calls it compression, and I also call it compression on my Pulp and Pill and my brand new compressor, the Whitey Tidy. What? Correct. But no matter what you call it, it's all the same function. It is a threshold. It is the control of how much guitar signal it takes to trigger the compression effect. And to further demonstrate that, let me show you this. Right here we have your guitar signal represented by the white waveform. Now the peak of the guitar is at 10 decibels. And then we have three different control situations for the compression or threshold knob. The first one sets the compression or threshold at 15 dB. This means that this line right here is what it would take for the signal to get up to to trigger the compressor. We notice that the 10 dB peak of your guitar signal in white isn't reaching 15 dB threshold, so the compressor's not turning on. When we see the 9 dB setting, the knob's turned up quite a bit, we notice that it cuts across the top 1 dB of your guitar's 10 dB signal. 
What happens there is that little 1 dB peak gets compressed down underneath the 9 dB threshold. Now we have the most drastic setting. We've turned that knob up further. A 3 dB threshold is smushing way down on your 10 dB signal and only allowing 3 dB of your signal underneath the threshold. And that's a lot of compressed sound. <laughs> The number two control you need to know about is called attack. This is the moment that you hit the guitar to the point that that guitar signal hits the threshold. What will the attack be like, fast or slow? Back to that house diagram we saw, attack is the same as when mom calls everyone to dinner. How quickly do they get there? Then we have number three is release. It is the exact opposite of attack. It's how long does it take everyone to leave the dinner table. So once we've hit the guitar, it's compressed, does it quickly leave compression or does it slowly slope off away from compression? Then we have ratio. You'll see this control say things like one to one, that's no compression, two to one's a little bit, three to one's more, four to one's even more, and you even have infinite ratio controls and that's just a limiter. Limiting is in essence just a really harsh and aggressive compressor. Then we have my favorite compressor control, the blend or parallel compression. The blend control like I use in my pulp and peel and whitey tidy essentially lets you blend in untouched clean guitar signal with the compressed signal so you always have the clarity of that original path. Then you have volume or makeup gain. When you compress a signal, sometimes it can feel like your compressor made everything a little more quiet. Just turn the knob up and that fixes that. On most compressors as well, they make really great clean boost when you crank that volume knob. You can hit overdrives with them, amps with them, and so on. The two biggest tips I can give you about integrating a compressor pedal into your guitar rig are put it before your drives. I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten over the years that say, this compressor pedal's noisy, this one's noisy, this guy makes one, but it's noisy. Or you read that on a forum and you find out that they have it after their distortion. Well, the problem is the compressor's not noisy. No compressor should be noisy within itself, but compressors bring up quiet things. So that means that any hiss or noise coming from an overdrive pedal gets brought up equally as loud to your guitar signal. It's just a big no-no, so put those before your drive pedals. And the second tip I give you is to play to the compression pedal and you'll notice that you feel it more than you hear it. That's where I like compression the most. I'm not a big massive fan of always using it as a very audible effect, but I do love turning on a compressor and feeling the way that my guitar's pickups and my fingers respond differently through it to my amp. It's all about feeling and when you find that, you'll know it. One of my favorite uses of compression is to sustain my slide playing. I really got turned on to this by a song called High Hopes on Pink Floyd's The Division Bell. David Gilmour's guitar sound is epic there and I put a compressor before an overdrive and combine that with a long quarter note delay and it adds a ton of life to my slide playing.
Another way that I've always used compression is almost as an always on leveling effect. So I have a tendency to make riffs out of the notes within chords. So as I'm picking through those, it will be quiet, and then I'll go to those same chords and strum through them for bigger parts of the song. The compressor really brings those quieter passages together with the harder hitting loud passages and keeps my guitar perfectly in balance with the drums. While compression is usually a very subtle thing, it can be a very noticeable effect in genres like country with chicken pickers or funk music where they really compress those clean guitars. You could also just invent your own genre like spaghetti western surf funk music, whatever you want to do. Today's record time is brought to you by a masterpiece from 1980. It is The Talking Heads Remain in Light. And track one is the song that I most like because it's my favorite Talking Heads song ever. From the moment you play it, you hear compression on the guitar, the drums, the bass, the keys, the synths. Everything has compression. And this album and that song are a clinic on how to use compression as an effect, something that you definitely hear and something that definitely changes the song. In the comments below, I would love for you to tell me about an album, artist, whatever you wanna talk about that has compression like I'm talking about here. Tell me why you love it. Make sure you check this out. I think you're really gonna like it. Thanks for watching. I wanna lead out here with some of my own compressor suggestions for you that are out in the market. Number one is the Boss CP1X. Boss has always blazed a trail in compression and this thing is outstanding, so be sure to check it out. A boutique classic, the Diamond Compressor, can't recommend it enough as well. My Pulp and Pill, I have four versions. This is number four. It has DI out for bass players and acoustic parallel dirt blend control. Lots of features, really powerful. The Warden by my friends at Earthquaker. You got six knobs, so tons of tweakability. Uh, a couple Keeley pedals, huge thanks to Keeley. Uh, he sent these out for the videos. I have his old one as you saw in the video, but the Pro is outstanding. You saw it in one of those songs. If you wanna have all the features, almost of like a computer plug-in 
compressor where you can tweak it to death. This is the way to go. The more simplified normal compressor that he's making, it's outstanding. Uh, the MXR Dynacomp, it really doesn't get more simple than this. Um, don't get hung up on what logo, what year. Don't be a forum person like that. Just buy one and play it because these are really approachable and easy to get to sound well. And then my new Whitey Tidy, uh, small enclosure. You have a clean blend, three knobs, not a bad sound in it. So obviously I'm gonna recommend that. If you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon for notifications of future episodes. And also tell me your favorite song from the day and your favorite compressor pedal and how you use it in those comments below. See you later.